first one comes from Alina Booker from Cologne, who says, what is the weirdest dream you've ever had? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you have some weird dreams? I have very weird dreams. <laughs> I, I used to have this recurring one all the time. The thing is, it would be like, in where in bed where and I'd be in my dream in bed waking up so it'd be like really realistic yeah. and there was this one where this man used to come through my door and his eye used to be down here and he'd grab me by my feet and swing me round by my feet and then I'd then I'd wake up what so it'd the... happen like all the time <laughs> oh my that is terrifying yeah. you don't get them anymore those ones not those ones no no, no. <laughs> that's got me sure <laughs> <What a> freak <laughs> Nanny from New York, hi Nanny. They want to know, when did you first realise that you were famous? <laughs> did you have a moment when you were like, oh my God, I'm actually um, a big deal? I think <laughs> it was honestly when people started like, telling me things on Twitter, like, mm. oh, I've, you've helped me through this. That's when I felt like I was doing something. Maybe not, f I don't know what, I don't know what famous feels like, but mm. I definitely know that I love to, I love that I'm impacting people's lives. So, I guess, like, really recently, mm. yeah. Next question comes from Lydia Sicconi from Surrey, England, who asks, you're such a big inspiration to me. Who oh. inspired you growing up and who inspires you now? My sister inspired me a lot. She's a very strong woman and very confident, so she, she I wanted to be like that. And then artists like Alana Smorset inspired me lyrically because she wrote about very different things, so that inspired me to just step outside of the box and think in a different way. I'm going to go to London now, Georgine, who asks, what is your songwriting process? <laughs> very different every time. Like... Oh, really? Yeah. I could be in a taxi and write a whole song on the way home and then have that ready for the studio and go and work with a producer like, that way. Or I could go into the studio with no idea what I'm going to write about, and as soon as they start playing some chords, then it all just trickles into my brain. So there's loads of different ways. There's sometimes where I just get on the mic and just ad lib different melodies, and then yeah. the lyrics come later. So it's, it's all different. I don't really like to have like a specific way, because that when you start getting into routines and it starts coming out of routine, that's when it's like, oh my God, I'm getting writer's block, or I can't, why can't I write like that anymore? Or, so I just don't think about it. Like run free. Yeah. We're going all the way to Perth now to Emma Amos. Hi, Emma. Mm. Um, she wants to know, how did you meet Ed Sheeran? Uh, our management have a studio underground and I was just writing and my manager at the time was like, come upstairs, I want you to meet someone. And I'm like, oh, Right, cool, come upstairs, and there's Elton John and Ed Sheeran in the oh same room. Gosh. And I was like, hi! Like, I tried to be really cool. Mm. I, I try not to, like, get all like that. But Ed was showing Elton his new stuff, oh, wow. and Elton was just singing along with it, and I was just like, oh, my days. That was the first time, and then we met each other properly again when I was writing in Paris and he was doing some promo out there on a show. From then, it just bloomed and blossomed into a great, great friendship, out, even outside of music, you know, we're yeah. just great friends. And... That must have been so, so much fun on the tour then, when you actually turned yeah. with your friend. <laughs> yeah, that's, what, that's why it was extra special. That was like the biggest audiences I've ever experienced as a soloist. Mm. And now I can't wait for my solo tour.